Air Force Gator by Dan Reichert. Prologue, September 11th, 2001, Abilene, Texas. Harsh light crept through the curtains of the Interstate Inn as Air Force Gator slowly opened his eyes. He hated the light, especially on mornings like this. Maybe it was for the best, as there wasn't anything worth seeing in this latest string of sneezy hotel rooms. Amongst the cigarette butts, fast food receipts, and crumpled beer cans was Liza, last night's prostitute. He thought it was Liza, but it could have just as easily been Jasmine or Louie, any Abilene whore that was cheap and available. Some would bolt right after the deed was done, but others were kind, or realistically, addicted, enough to stay the night and get fucked up with this washed-up alligator pilot. He knew they didn't care about his war stories, but it didn't matter. Waking up never bothered him before. <coughs> Shit. Ugh. I used to have being sick. Waking up never bothered him before. He used to get up before dawn each day, whether it was from banging on the barracks door or a view coming from a bugle. Carrying logs around the track became basic routine for the human recruits, but Air Force Skater constantly struggled to lift them with his tiny alligator arms. <coughs> tiny alligator arms. <coughs> that was then, and it seemed like a different life in Air Force Gator's mind. Desert Storm, Libya, bombing runs in Bosnia and Herzegovina. They were all being... <coughs> Fucking hell! <coughs> <coughs> They were all vaguely unpleasant memories, and he managed to keep at bay with a steady diet of booze and women. Mornings like this were his reality for the last two, three, maybe five years. He didn't care. As long as his increasingly infrequent air show paychecks were enough to bring him the booze in a cheap hotel room, he was as content as a clinically depressed, desperately alcoholic alligator could be. If he was going to chase down another drunk before last night's buzz completely wore off, he had to give Liza or Lydia or whatever her, or whatever her cash and hit the road. In an effort that was becoming more difficult every day, he managed to hoist himself out of bed and begin the daily search for his wallet. <coughs> it sat on top of the TV, which he must have been too drunk to turn off the night before. Fingering through the cash to find the required $50, his eyes stopped on something that always managed to hasten the drinking process. Air Force Gator didn't remember when the picture was taken, nor was it especially remarkable. His grandpa's farm in Victoria, Texas provided the backdrop as the old man sat in his favorite spot on the porch. An infant Air Force Gator rested in his arms, not yet aware of his grandfather's legendary accomplishments. As the first pilot to break the long-standing gator barrier, gator barrier in the Air Force, Grandpa Gator's tenure in the military would have been remarkable, even if his combat skills had been merely adequate. Instead, his unmatched aviation skills and mechanical genius raised him to cult-like status among his peers and the world at large. Before he had even graduated from the academy, he built the Gator Plane, an agile... <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. A nearly indestructible aircraft that was decades ahead of its time. Still, clearly wasn't the focus for Grandpa Gator as the body of the plane was a massive recreation of his own snarling <laughs> A fucking gator plane. With it, he took down 72 Axis aircraft in the Allied invasion of Sicily and landed it in one piece. Even after his flying days were over, he... <coughs> I really need to get rid of this cough, but I'm still going to keep going. Sorry, guys. Even after his flying days were over, he maintained his celebrity status by tirelessly campaigning for Gator rights. Grandpa Gator never left the public eye until his death in 1998, when he peacefully passed away on the farm surrounded by his family. Air Force Gator was lucid enough to accept that his own end wouldn't resemble Grandpa's in any way. Any reminder for, of the old man was enough to trigger a psychological crisis for Air Force Gator, so he began scanning the dirty hotel carpet for any leftover boots. Pushing beer cans aside, he spotted a light... Leader? I'm sorry. Leader of Old Crow with just enough whiskey to knock the memories back a bit. Collapsing into the coffee-stained chair in the corner, he emptied the bottle into his mouth with a speed that would have given Keith Richards pause. As he waited for the comforting buds to sink in, he focused his attention on the television for the first time this morning. He was never a fan of the hustle and bustle of New York, but he knew enough about it to recognize what was burning. South Tower had already collapsed 
and the flaming hold of the North Tower stared back at him. His hungover brain struggled to make sense of the images, but it would have been just as incomprehensible for a sober mind. He watched as North Tower crumbled to the ground in a cloud of ash and steel, feeling his grip involuntarily tightened on the bottle of Old Crow. Any sense of duty, pride, or ambition had been long dormant in Air Force Gator's once brilliant mind, but the sobering reality of that morning brought it flooding back. Glass entered his scales as the bottle shattered in his fist, but it would be days before he even realized it. If there was ever a time to bring back the old Air Force Gator, this was it. He needed it for himself just as much as Old Glory needed him. Tossing the fifty dollars on top of a blissfully unaware Eliza, he marched out the door with a fire in his belly that hadn't been lit since before his grandfather's death. In that moment, he didn't even know who was responsible for the tragedy, but he did know one thing. He was going to bring it to the sons of bitches. Chapter 1 March 1st, 2005 Abbottabad, Pakistan <coughs> Excuse me. Fitting five Navy SEALs and one si full-sized alligator in the back of a minivan was no easy feat, but a military APV would no doubt draw the attention of the Pakistani government. As it made its way down the curved roads of Bilal Town, every soldier in that van knew the magnitude of this operation. If things went as planned, they'd forever be known as the brave souls who took down the world's most wanted man. After years of personally hunting down Osama bin Laden, Air Force Gator had narrowed down his location to one of two possibilities. The caves of Tora Bora, or a high-walled compound in Abbottabad. A thorough raid of the latter proved fruitless, and Air Force Gator was crushed. His will couldn't be stopped, and he convinced his superiors to greenlight an Abbottabad raid after months of reconnaissance. This felt better than Tora Bora, and Air Force Gator knew he was on the verge of history. His five fellow passengers in the back of the van were grizzled veteran veterans all, but they were still in awe of the presence of a military legend. What's the story with that picture in your wallet, Gator? Asked the young seal named Benny. That one you're always looking at. Just my grandpa and the farm I grew up on, Air Force Gator said. Used to bum me out when I was going through some tough times. Now it reminds me of what I need to live up to. <coughs> <coughs> Not that one, said Benny. The one of the crocodile. While the picture of the farm served as a fond reminder of his grandfather, Air Force Gator had added another picture for a different kind of inspiration. That's Gustav. Used to be a friend of mine. Pretty obvious he's not a friend anymore, said Benny. He drew crosshairs over his damn face. Is he Is he one, the one from the Bosnia mission? The one that... Enough about Gustav. Don't ask me sh uh, Don't ask me shit about Gustav or Bosnia. Get your mind focused on what we're about to do, damn it. You realize what's at stake here, so let's cut the chat. Benny fell silent as the rest of the van attempted to ignore the uncomfortable tension that the mention of Gustav created. As the van continued on the dusty Bilal town's roads, no one spoke a word for minutes. Two minutes, yelled the driver. Air Force Gator spoke up. All right, SEALs, you know the drill. We want to be in and out before anyone knows we're there. Pull this off right, and this place will be a crater without its occupants or the pasca... <laughs> Pakistani government knowing we were ever on the ground. You five know your roles. B Benny, you provide sniper support from the hill in case things get messy. Jake, you're guarding the road leading up to the compound. The rest of you, I want you circling the perimeter while I'm in there. This whole operation takes less than 15 minutes, and then I want us all back in this van and hightailing it out of this shithole. The van pulled up to its destination, and under a unremarkable field of dust and dirt about 200 meters from Bin Laden's suspected compound. Air Force Gator hopped out of the van and motioned for the van to continue on to its next drop-off point. Jake closed the van door. Can't believe the crazy bastard is digging. Didn't even know alligators could do that. They can't, said Benny. He can. Something special about that goddamn gator. Pulling out his compass, Air Force Gator made sure he was on track before he started digging. He could eyeball the compound from where he was, but he needed to be dead on for this mission to be a success. Once aligned, he dug straight down for ten feet before, <laughs> sorry, before heading in Bin Laden's direction. Mines and other underground defenses could be a factor in this raid, so he had to make sure to get below their possible location. Air Force Gator packed light for the mission, not wanting to exhaust himself further during the dig with added weight. His munitions pack was strapped to his torso, and it included only the essentials for pulling off the hit. 
Military brass had technically labeled this a capture or kill mission, but they all knew which option the alligator would go with. Only one thing was on Air Force Gator's mind as he quickly burrowed towards the compound.